Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend, it's gonna be a good day. I hope you wonder, just loving this wonderful season and everything about it, you know, the lights, the decorations, the food, all of it is just wonderful. And the music, you can't forget that. And I am thrilled today to have a wonderful woman of God Right here on Home Keepers, Marilyn Hickey, and I can hear you applauding all over the place in your homes. Okay, let's go. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> we are so happy to have her and also to help her debut a book. She's written a lot of books, but this is a book about her. This is a book about her life. And I'm telling you, it surprised me because as long as I've known her, and I've only seen her from time to time, she's happy and they had the happy church and everything was happy. And I thought, I'm not that happy. This woman has been through the fire. She's been through refining fire and uh, things that you've probably never heard of we're going to touch on today. So I welcome Marilyn Hickey and you will want to get this book. I promise you that. Um, and so we'll have information on the screen how you can do that. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make a Christmas thing. I mean, what is Christmas without cookies? This is a cranberry orange shortbread cookie and it's got cranberries, oranges, almond extract think of all those flavors together we'll put it together for you and uh, let me remind you we are jewish we are <laughs> viewer supported jewish support that would be nice that would be great and um we appreciate every gift you send large or small you can send it in the mail the information is on your screen or you can write to us at box 6922 clearwater florida 33758 and we'll get it right out to you and i'm joining stephanie here She's really the Christmas girl. <laughs> we were talking today about having a Christmas calendar all next year, right? I will drive door. everyone upstairs absolutely crazy uh -huh. if I do we'll that. We'll start January 1st. <laughs> okay. No, I'll get the huffing and the puffing outside. I might. Uh, so anyway, you want this recipe, yeah. I promise you. You get the, these cookies with a cup of tea or a cup yes. of coffee. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So you're going to, you have a half a cup of um, dried cranberries and you have a quarter cup of uh, sugar. You're going to put them in there and we're just going to break them down. If you don't have a food processor just put them in whole it's okay they'll mm -hmm. just be bigger chunks of do? cranberry yep okay we're gonna go the other way there you go all right all right <laughs> so i have um <laughs> it's not working for every me. time oh there, there you we go <laughs> okay i have flour the amateur hour yes is that good but yeah let's stop it for a second Yep, perfect. Okay. I have flour and I have sugar. All of the ingredient am amounts will come up at the end of on the screen. So you'll have they'll have that. I'm gonna mix this together. And then I'm gonna put in some cold butter. But first I'm gonna put in real orange juice. Yeah, real orange <sighs> juice. This is gonna have the greatest flavors. But um, lemon or orange zest. I wonder how many cookies in the world are made in the month of December. So many millions. millions. Oh, almond extract. Almond extract. Yes. Oh, You're going to so love good. them. And just a little bit of almond ex extract is all you need. Okay, so you want to clean up my mess here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut in but cold butter with the pastry cutter. If you don't have a pastry cutter, you can just use two forks. Okay. I can tell today's your Friday because we are Jewish supported. No. <laughs> Anybody who supports, we'll take yeah. it from any nationality. It's Friday. It's any her religion, Friday. Yes. yes, yes, yes. It's not my Friday, but it's yeah, her Friday, yeah. and her brain's already going home. So, yep. <laughs> Although I'm going on vacation in a week, and I'll tell you what, my my brain has already started. Yeah, her brain went out the door around yeah. 10 a.m. Oh, think. a couple days ago. Yeah. I put I usually put eggs on in the morning. <laughs> yeah, just a couple hard boiled eggs for breakfast. I went the other morning, and there was only boiling water. There were mm. no eggs because yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Yep. So you want to get this crummy, and then you're going to take your nice, clean hands. And this and Go I, for it. When I first made this, I was like, oh, I need that. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I can't okay, get it loose. Okay, I got it. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's not just me. What is happening? There we go. Okay. Uh, okay. There you go. I'll get it. Okay. We'll get it. It's amateur hour at Home Cooking yeah. Shopping Network, whatever. <laughs> Now that, there's no liquid in that, is No, there? that's why I was like, when I first made it, I was like, okay, what is happening here? But once you get your hands into it and you get that butter worked. And you work it and then you roll it into a ball, put it in plastic, and you need to put it in the refrigerator. We left it in overnight. Yes, you roll it into, um, not a ball, uh, a, a, log. A, a log. Yeah. Yes. A disc. What's a disc? Yeah. <laughs> and you get... 
<laughs> you get rid of your frustration. Yes. So it all comes together. You put it in a log. You wrap it up in the paper, in the the paper, in the yeah, that I, I, saran wrap. I, well, I love butter cookies anyway. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so good. Let it sit for at least four hours or overnight. You mm -hmm. slice it. You and then coat you coat it in them. sugar. Coat each cookie in sugar. Is that gorgeous? Uh huh. I and then you bake it. One yet. Twelve. Me neither. Oh my. <sighs> so much butter. I need my cup of tea. Yes. And I'm in heaven. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to taste one, but my hands are a mess. Okay. You want to help me? Here. <laughs> this this one's yours. Okay. Oh. They are so tasty. It has to be with okay. those ingredients. Those are better than the cookies that we get from that company at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, the shortbread? I know. And those are shortbread cookies, <gasps> too. <sighs> so if um, she's going to keep, you can see it's coming it's together It's coming now. together, yes. It comes together. Mm -hmm. takes a little work. Yeah. But trust me, that one bite makes it worthwhile. So good. So if you would like this recipe, that information is coming up on your screen. It's absolutely free. Just get it the way it's most convenient for you. And if you've never met Marilyn Hickey before, you're going to meet her right now, and you're going to love her. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Okay, Marilyn, I brought you a cookie, but you can't oh. have it until it's after the show. Yes, because I tell my guests, if you do good, we give you You food. get a cookie. Otherwise, you don't get a no, cookie. No. Oh, I'm going to really try. <laughs> you, you really I try. like cookies. I'm so glad to have you. Thank yeah. you. I'm so We're glad. both Denver girls. Oh, and that's a positive, yes, it to is. say the least. I was born and raised in Colorado, and every time I fly in, I see those Rocky Mountains, and I'm, I'm home. All right. Yeah. Right. Well... Your book really surprised me so much. And you know what I was thinking? You wrote, you wrote a, an autobiography at the right time. Good. Somebody, some people write them too early. Yeah. And, and you have a real view from the you know, rear view mirror. So congratulations. Thank I you. I would say it surprised me a lot. Uh, your, your childhood and all. I uh, mentioned you've been through uh, refining fire, and uh, I'm sure this brought back a lot of memories when you did this. Yes. Did you wonder how a little girl like uh -huh. you were, the circumstances, and how God has used you? Did it just kind of blow you away? Because you've spoken to millions of people. Right, right. Well, it's awesome what God does, but I think this is very important for everyone who's watching. Mm -hmm. There is a process in your life. You mm -hmm. don't start up here. You start here. Mm -hmm. A little girl in Texas lying on the ground looking at airplanes and saying, someday <laughs> I'll be on an airplane. Now I live on them. Mm -hmm. But I think the processes of God, if mm -hmm. we can embrace every area mm -hmm. and let him teach us and mold us and make us in that time, that's very important. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your childhood? And, and it's well defined in this book, but uh, just... Throw it out there to the audience. How do you look back on it? Well, I look back with my father who built our house, a little three-room house in Dalhart, Texas. And I look at how hard he worked. I look at my mother who loved to cook, you know, and loved to be a homemaker. And those were good things. And then my mother would say to me, you know, you're a smart baby. And so I would be having a spelling test. Oh, I'm so worried. Oh, no, you'll do fine. You're a smart baby. I said, how do you know you're, I'm a smart baby? I just know you are. <laughs> and her, her positive words echoed throughout mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. That's so important. You had some misfortune, though. You, you were abused. Yes. Sexually abused. And um, that must give you a huge heart because that's a real problem today. It must give you a huge heart for a lot of the women you minister to. Well, I think uh, that happened when we lived in Pennsylvania. That was during the Second World War. And we had to live with my aunt and uncle because there wasn't a place, we couldn't rent a place mm -hmm. for a while. And my uncle 
uh, molested me and I'm 11, I don't really know the facts of life. Mm -hmm. You know, I just knew I didn't like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And then when we moved out, you know, uh, then I began to see this was the wrong thing. But I can't say that, uh, what can I say, that it overcame me. Mm -hmm. Because I went into seventh grade, I liked foreign languages, you know, I really got into the plan of God. Mm -hmm. And I forgave my uncle, mm -hmm. you know. And so I believe he's in heaven. I'll see him. I won't be embarrassed to see him. I'll be delighted. Mm -hmm. You have to forgive. It's core. I, I, one of the hardest things I ever did was when God took me through some forgiveness. Uh, when I was the one who was wronged, like you were. You yeah. were wronged. Yeah. yeah. He should have come crawling on his knees and asking you for forgiveness. Right. But God asks us to come up higher. Exactly. And it pays. Also, uh, your dad had some mental issues and um, you didn't have a fairy tale childhood. <laughs> no. My father uh, had anger issues. He had been an orphan. He and my aunt, the, uh, my grandparents mm -hmm. died with tuberculosis in Pennsylvania. And so my father had issues. He met my mother in Texas, and he had mental issues. Mm -hmm. So he had a total mental breakdown when I was probably about 19 or 20, went into a mental hospital, but my mother heard a pastor that you know mm -hmm. on the radio and went to that church, a spirit-filled church, and got born again. Mm -hmm. And she just put scriptures every place in our house. You go in the bathroom, full of scriptures. And <laughs> there was such a transformation in her life. And it overflowed to my father. He came out of the mental hospital. They said he never would. To my brother, to me, we got spirit filled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a big deal. You received the Lord when you were... In, in, I was Methodist, 16, Methodist church. Really? And I was in Pennsylvania. Junior high or about then. And I had a hunger for the word because I said to God, I want to be where you are. Where are you? Are you in the Methodist church, Baptist church? Where? And he said, I'm in the word. So I began to read the word. And uh, then when I was 16, I went to a Methodist youth camp, a Baptist minister spoke, and I got born again. So I got the author of the book inside, mm -hmm. and he's never left me. And you, you've had some positive influences from several denominations. Yes, I have. I think that's, I think that's important. Yes. They are carrying the word, and they might not do it exactly the same, but the word's pretty powerful. Well, and I go to Muslim countries, and I'm so accepted in Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. You know, I just got back from Egypt. And it's, Egypt is in revival. Can you imagine? It's this not, is a Muslim country. How and they're does in that revival. work? I've seen pictures of you in front of what it looked like, hundreds of thousands of people. A million people. With your little scarf on. <laughs> All right. Uh, but how does a Christian do that out in the open, talking about Jesus in Pakistan? Well, it shocked me because I found out in the Quran it says Jesus heals. So I had a heart because I started praying for Islamic countries and God really put it in my heart to reach these people and they believed in healing. So I put on the scarf and went over and you know everybody said well they'll kill you or yeah. nobody will come, they hate women. But it was just the opposite. And I saw God heal people, I saw them get born again and I saw this is a place where God is moving, and I was very accepted. So probably I've gone to more Muslim countries, and I don't compromise at no. all. Hmm. Not at all. Uh, I have more favor in Muslim countries than most countries. And so you take that little bit out of the Koran and use it? Your Koran says Jesus heals. Yes, and so then I say, and I put a scarf on, I advertise come and be healed. And so, you know, I have... So a million people come. <laughs> and people come, uh -huh. yeah. I want to get back to your childhood just a little bit because, or your younger life, because sure. you, you adopted a, a son. Right. And you gave birth to a daughter, and I have interviewed her right yeah. there, Sarah. Sarah. 
Uh, and uh, like most children, they can disappoint you once in a while. Uh, your son got heavy into drugs for right. a period, and you prayed and prayed and prayed. And then Sarah left uh, for a summer th from college and came back and called you up and said, oh, I don't believe in God anymore. Right. What was that like? Well, she had gone overseas to Germany. She was a German education major. Uh -huh. And so when she came home, she said, Mom, I don't know if you'll love me anymore. I said, why? Because I don't believe in Jesus. Now, these are key times that God will give us answers. So uh -huh. I said, Sarah, when you were born, you didn't believe in Jesus. I don't love you because of what you believe. I love you because you're mine. And she went through that time on campus, and a young man said, I know what you're going through. I spent a year in France, and my faith was really tested. And so he took her on, and they went through the Gospel of John, and she recommitted her life. Yeah. And this young man, his father had been saved in my meeting six years before. Wow. That's why I said at the top of the show, you've been through the refining fire. Yeah. I mean, just the things I've listed, and, and there's more. Right. But how it must enrich your ministry. Oh. You've, you've faced it head on. And I didn't know that till I read this book. By the way, if you just joined me, I'm talking to Marilyn Hickey. And uh, this is a brand new autobiography. Uh, the, we'll put the information on the screen as to where you can get it. I can't tell you how much I really recommend this book to you. Uh, you're going to find a lot of things about Marilyn Hickey you didn't know. I just thought she walked around in faith all the time, but <laughs> <laughs> she's had a few human experiences, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, right. Uh, and I'm glad you put it in there. Yeah. I am glad you put it yeah. in there because none of us are worth too much till we go through the furnace. Let's face it. Well, and I think you get a stronger faith when you come out. Mm -hmm. And then when people come to me and say, well, I've been abused, I say, yeah, I know what it's like. Yeah. And I'm very successful and you can be too. So I think God doesn't waste anything. I said, he's so economical. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't waste our tribulations. <laughs> no. Now we haven't talked about Wally. Right. Uh, you were married to Wally for how many years? Well, I was married and I have to think, uh, 60 some years when he passed away. Yeah. And um, you built a church together. Right. And how was it that you're this team, but then your ministry kind of takes off on its own? How did that happen? Well, he, I wanted to reach the lost, and we weren't having lost people come to our church. Mm -hmm. So how do you reach them? And I said, said that to God. We don't have any lost people. He said, you have to go where they are. Mm -hmm. So I went and began home Bible studies, cup of coffee, a cookie, and a Bible. And I had six women, and they got saved. And pretty soon I had 12 home Bible studies. I had night Bible studies. And they said, why don't you go on the radio? Mm -hmm. So I went to my husband and said, you know, would the church pay for me to do a radio program five minutes a day? $60 a month. He said, no. He said, it's your baby. You feed it. I'm behind you, but you feed the baby. Mm -hmm. And so he always encouraged me, always. But he also provoked me in faith. And it was a very healthy relationship. Yeah. Yes. And uh, by him doing that, it set you up for the bigger ministries and bigger it did. ministries. It did. Uh, you built the Happy Church right there, and um, are you still part of that? Well, it's called Encounter Church now. Mm -hmm. Now, this is awesome, God, but my son-in-law and my daughter have the church. Oh, okay. Yeah, Good. it's called Encounter. and uh -huh. I mean, this is an old church, but we have so many young people coming to it, and I think, God, I never dreamed you would take mm -hmm. the little we had mm -hmm. and do this long-term thing, you know, and it's never yeah. in vain. Yeah. I, I thought as I read your book and you started out with a little Bible study and then did you have 22 at one time? I had Bible. 22 Bible, Bible studies, studies at one time. I had them in different towns mm -hmm. too, yeah. And the only thing I could think of really was how that prepared you. That 
you were really in the word. Now, when there's a Bible class, I can tell you the one that gets the most out of it is the teacher. Yeah, because I've do. taught Bible. And so you didn't know it, but you were going through some intensive Bible I was. study and training while you were doing that. Because I didn't go to Bible school, but I had to know the Bible because I had to answer their questions. So I would say to them, I'll have the answer mm -hmm. next week. So I would dig and dig and dig and dig. So it was very healthy. Then we had a Bible school for a while. So yeah, I'm for Bible mm -hmm. very much. And how long has Wally been gone now? He's been gone about seven years. And I'll have to tell you what happened. The morning after he died, I awakened singing in tongues. And I said, Lord, why am I singing? You know, Wally just died. He said, because I danced over you in the night. Now, I have never carried grief. I had a good marriage, mm -hmm. but I've never carried grief. And I think of that scripture that he carries our griefs. And I think sometimes, especially if you're a widow, you know, you think, oh, I have to grieve. Could you let him carry your griefs? And he mm -hmm. carried mine. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a sad feeling. I thank God for the happy times we had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if there's anything in this book to me that stands out is your love for the word, your total faith in the word. In fact, your contemporaries were faith people. Hagen, Osborne, right. Right. Oral Roberts, some of those. How do you use the word today? I read where you, you got some whole books memorized in the Bible. Right. Well, I do that from Joshua 1.8. That's my key to success. If you meditate on the word day and night, if you speak the word day and night, if you do the word day and night, you will be successful in everything you do. So I memorize books of the Bible. And so meditate is to say it over and over and over. And in order to meditate, I have to speak. Mm -hmm. And in order to speak it, then I want to do it. And so... If you said, what's your key scripture for your life? It's mm -hmm. Joshua 1. Joshua 8. 1, 8. I, yeah, I'm memorizing Ephesians right now. They're, they're probably Joshua 1, 8. You can write that down. <laughs> yeah. Yes, for sure. Um, what are, You've been to Pakistan, Egypt, the Gaza Strip. I can't remember all. You've been in so many countries, but so many Muslim countries. I have been in 137 countries, and I haven't ministered in that many, but I have been in mm -hmm. that many. And so I just, I, I have a heart for Muslim people. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, Frida Lindsay told me, you need to pray over continents. So I said, okay, tell me how you do that. So I memorized the continent of Africa that's hard. There are a lot of countries there. And yeah. then they change names. Yeah. It's disgusting. And so <laughs> I began praying over nations. And so many of those nations now I go to. As I said at the beginning, everything is a process. Mm -hmm. You don't start here and end up there. You start here and you go through the process. And, you know, now, you know, I, I'll be going to Bangladesh and to Saudi Arabia. Those are new countries for me. I haven't been in them. Girl, you give me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. So when, when you tell them from the Quran, Jesus heals, do you, do you lay hands on people there or do you just- No, too many people. Mm -hmm. So what we do in Muslim countries is we put down carpet. The same in India, they sit on the ground cross-legged so we put down carpet, and basically what I do, it's just pretty simple. I teach one miracle of Jesus, and I break it down into four or five steps. The little woman, you know, she was bleeding. She heard, she said, she came, she touched. So then, you know. That's I, what she would tell a first grader. Exactly. And then I uh, start calling out certain healings you know, and have people stand. And then, you know, I say now, you know, if you received a miracle, and it's very simple, it's not complicated. Mm -hmm. I want you to come up and share. So I have trained people on each side of the platform, and I have a medical doctor. 
and they come up and they share their testimony. Then I invite them to be born again. And the way we do follow up is sneaky. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really. We're going to tell the whole world here. Yeah, I'll tell the whole world. <laughs> so we say, now, uh, tomorrow night, because usually I have two or three nights, I'm going to be praying over families. So if you would like us to pray for your family, you need to sign this card. And if I have your card, we can pray over it. If I don't have your card. And then that's the way we have follow-up. Praise the Lord for yeah. that. You know, I was just thinking when you tell them and they're sitting on the carpet out there and all, their faith is so simple. I know. They I, haven't been through all the stuff no, we've been through. To, no. You know, and they're desperate. Mm -hmm. They don't have money for doctors, and maybe they don't even have mm -hmm. the doctors. I only have a couple minutes here, but uh, you do a lot of humanitarian. Yes, work. I do. Yes. How do you make a decision on that? Because <sighs> there's so many needs. How, how in the world do you choose one? Well, I choose leaders over there okay. that help me and that I trust, and I work with them. Mm -hmm. So I was just in Egypt. I worked with an Assembly of God leader. Mm -hmm. So we find out, you know, through him what we can do. And I trust him. I know mm -hmm. him very well. So you don't want to just throw money around. Mm -hmm. Plus, I like literature. You know, I said, it works while you sleep. Mm -hmm. If you leave books and things in their language, you go home, but they've got the word mm -hmm. right there with them. Mm -hmm. So I do different things in different countries. But you, I've been cheated. You have to work and know who you're working yes, with. Yes, yes, Or they'll run off with everything. Well, I can't tell you what a pleasure it's been to have you here. And um, will you come and see us next time? Uh, I'd you like come to. to Florida. Do you like to cook? You're probably too busy to cook. Do I like to cook? Uh-huh. I love to cook. Okay. It's relaxing to me to cook. Okay. Yeah. We invite you to cook next time. I will cook. Next time. I love come. that. <laughs> but I, I just praise God for your ministry. And let me remind you again, the name of the book is It's Not Over T Until You Win. Information is on your screen. I'm sure they can get it at Amazon and yes, Barnes and Noble, all those places. Highly, highly recommend it. Your life will be enriched if you read this book. And um, it will also encourage you because, as I've mentioned a couple of times, she's gone through refining fires. A lot of you are, but you're going to come out of that fire. Exactly. You come out the Word of God. Thanks for being with us, and please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 